Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. We're here with another video. And today's video will be an interesting one because we'll be doing another raw editor comparison. We're going to be comparing Luminar Neo with On One Photo Raw 2022. So a lot of people, I'm sure, have had this question, which one is the better photo editor, Luminar Neo or On One Photo Raw 2022? And that's because pricing wise, they are very similar. As you can see here, Luminar Neo costs 85 US dollars. You can also see it at 66 or 68 if there's a summer sale. On one, on the other hand, is similar priced. It usually goes for around 110 US dollars. But right now there is a summer sale which has it going for around 60 US dollars. So I'm actually going to answer this very interesting question by demonstrating each software. And I'm going to be forming the conclusion at the end. So which one you should get. So let's do the demonstration now. So let's start off with Luminar Neo. Here I am with this underexposed photo. So we're going to be focusing our editing on a low light photo and then we can compare the features of each photo editor. This photo was taken in a park in Japan during the Sakura bloom season. Now the main issue with this photo is there was very little light. The lights from the lamps are actually was the only source of light for this scene. So very dark scene. So luckily I was able to shoot this in RAW with the hope that someday I would be able to recover some of the details. Let's correct this image now with uh, Luminar Neo. So first thing I'm gonna do here is just reduce the temperature because it's RAW, we can easily do that. Okay, so we just reduce it. Luminar Neo did a good job of just reducing the temperature here. Now you'll notice this image is actually a pretty high ISO image because it was handheld. I had no chance to use a tripod in this area because there were so many people walking by. So because it was handheld, you can see the ISO was pretty high and it's extremely noisy, right? So the first thing we're probably gonna do is just reduce the noise here. And let's see how Luminar Neo does that. So Luminar Neo does have noise reduction here. So we're gonna reduce the luminosity of this. Okay, so you can see it was nicely reduced without the, the noise reduction. This is what you get. And with the noise reduction, that's what you get. All right, so there was an improvement. And so that's always a good thing. Okay, so let's go back to this. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do here is adjust the exposure. Now, because this is such a high contrast scene, you will notice that when I go to develop, which allows you to develop raw, so Luminar does support raw, and I adjust the exposure here. Okay, so you're gonna see that um, the lights will be blown out even more. So that's, a, that's an issue. And if I lower the exposure like so, you can see now there's some detail in the lights, though it has a funny blue cast to it, but um, you can see that the detail is actually being recovered, all right? So there is some, some detail there. So obviously we cannot just edit it globally. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the layers of Luminar. So how do we do that? So there's a few options in Luminar. The first one is to use what you call a mask. So I'm done with the raw adjustments here. So I'm just gonna click out of it. And you will notice so if I go to edit here, you see that this edit where I adjusted the, the white balance and a little bit of the shadow is now contained in this layer. So to make a new adjustment, you can go back to tools and then develop. And you can see now it's reset back. Anything you do here now will be a new adjustment. So it has a masking option in this mode. In the raw mode, you don't have the masking option. In the non-raw mode, you have the masking option. So that gives you a clue that when you're using layers in Luminar, you don't treat it really as a raw. So we're gonna click masking here and you have an option to do brush or mask AI here. So mask AI basically will use AI to actually detect objects in the scene. So it has an object detection capability here. So I'm just gonna click mask AI here. And the AI will analyze the scene and try to figure out which ones are the objects. All right. So as you can see, it has detected human, sky, flora, architecture, mountains, and man-made grounds. So if I click on human here, it's going to try to mask the humans in the scene. There you go. So obviously it did a partially good job because it did detect some of the scenes, but that's not what I want to select. I want to select actually the lights. So from this selection, it looks like architecture is the only option. So I'll click architecture and there you go. And obviously it missed 
selected for this particular scene. Sometimes it does work very well, but in this case it did not. And so we have no choice but to use some other way. And so what we're going to do here now is just use the brush because the mask AI didn't really work. So I'm just going to click brush here and I'm going to just brush through these lights. Unfortunately, uh, Luminar does not have edge detection in their brush. So I'm just going to, I'm going to expect that there'll be some spill over here, uh, but that's okay. We're going to just All right, so now that we've done the masking here, okay, we, I tried to make it as, as good as possible. Luminar Neo does support mask operations, so I can copy this mask and invert it. Okay, so you just basically have to go here to mask actions and just copy. And then you can go back to tools here. So let's just click develop to create the new layer, All right? And then for masking, you just go ahead and go to mask actions, then paste and then you just click invert. Okay, if I brush this, you will see that the overlay shows up, right? Like so. So now we can make some adjustments here. Just adjust a little bit of the exposure, shadows. All right, so that's basically the edit, but that's more or less what it is for a Luminar Neo. So as you can see, it's a pretty simple operation, right? In order to improve this low light photo. But how about in on one? How will it work in on one? All right, so in on one, let's start off by adjusting the temperature here. Let's reduce it like so. And the first thing we're going to do is just, just like in Luminar, we're going to reduce the noise. And on, on one 2022 has a great tool called on one no noise AI, their latest noise reduction technology. So let's apply that here. So I'm just going to zoom in so you can see that this is a really noisy image. I hope you can see that in your monitor. To use on one no noise, you simply have to go to noise and sharpening, all right? And it's just one click. So you just click on no noise AI, and there you go. So you can see the difference here. This was the before and the after. Okay, so you can see how nicely it preserves the details while really reducing, drastically reducing the noise. It's almost like you shot this with a low ice. That's a big advantage when you're editing low light photos. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is again, just like in Luminar, I'll take care of these lights. So compared to Luminar, On1 has more options to help you create precise masks. For example, if I go to local adjustments here to begin the masking operation, On1 has this edge detection brush called Perfect Brush. Let me just demonstrate that. Okay, I'm gonna make sure I have it, the overlay open. And then if I, so if I drag onto this, okay, I'm brushing. You can see there's some edge detection going on. Now, unfortunately, this particular brush, this edge detection is not very accurate. As you can see, as I'm brushing towards it, it's having a hard time getting these lights. But I think it's an issue with the, the perfect brush. Okay, so it does have edge detection, but I don't really recommend this method to get precise masks. I actually will recommend you use the AI mask. On one has its own version of AI mask. Let me show you how it works. So I'm just going to click mask here, All right? And then I'm going to just choose this AI quick mask. I believe on one calls it AI quick mask. AI quick mask is now selected. So what I want to do is just select keep, okay? Keep means I want to indicate those areas which have to be masked. So I'm just going to doodle here, these lights, as you can see here. Next, we have to indicate which ones we don't want to be included in the mask. So I'm just going to change this now to drop. And I'm just going to just doodle over those parts which should not be included in the mask. Yeah, that's basically that, All right? And then when you click apply, you can see that it did a pretty good job, right? So those in green are masked and those in red are not included in the mask. So if you zoom in, you can see it's a pretty accurate mask. So that's one advantage as well with On1 is the ability to create precise masks. So let's just make the adjustment now. So we're just going to click done here. Now these things are disabled uh, and I don't think it should be, but you can just click any of these presets to enable it. So I'm just going to click darken here. If you click darken, by default, the exposure will be lowered. But if I lower the exposure, See, 
you can see now that the nice detail is coming up to the lights and it doesn't have that funny looking cast that luminar has so one good thing about on one is the adjustments are a lot more natural looking so the colors have less chance of being a little bit wild looking right which luminar might have a tendency to have now you notice there are still some errors here that's normal right every ai might have mistakes here and there but the good news is you can actually refine this mask usually the edges of the mask so you can just click on this refine button just click on refine button and then you basically indicate do you want to get rid of erroneously masked areas or do you want to add to areas which have been erroneously excluded so in this case i want to get rid of erroneously masked areas specifically this edge here so i'm just going to choose paint out and then just basically just brush over the edge and let it do its magic there you go you see how it removed that let's undo that so you can see that was before and then you just masked it so you just basically brushed over the edge and it disappeared pretty handy okay so let me just do that again as here as well like so there might be some areas here as well you want to do all right so that beats brute force manual brushing right so in luminar this is the way it adjusted it no it's very similar but there is a cast but it didn't look as good as this adjustment i suppose the reason it looks so much better here is on one the support raw layer adjustments which I don't think luminar supports ground how about this background how do we take care of that so let's just create another layer we just click add adjustment but before that i'm going to click on this thumbnail to copy this mask so on one does support mask operation so i'm going to copy this mask i'm going to add the adjustment okay so it's going to take some time for whatever reason it does take time when it's going to copy the mask so i suppose it's going to copy all the uh, all the strokes that you made it's going to copy that and i'm going to click add adjustment now all right and you can see if i scroll up there will be a thumbnail again and this time i'm going to paste this right paste the mask and also invert it okay so you can see there is an indication a preview of the the mask itself if, if you're not sure you can always click view here so that's another nice thing about on one it has this view button so you can actually see the mask exactly now i don't want this mask because i want to select the background so what i'm going to do is click invert and now it's inverted so now the background is the one selected right so i'm gonna just click view again the thing which on one can improve is some of the ui indications right so this thing is not very helpful right because you don't know whether this toggled on or off so there are certain ui things which on one can improve and I, that's one thing what luminar does better it's the their ui is much more uh, intuitive let me just click out of view here now uh, obviously uh, it's again set to dark and which i don't want so i'm just going to get rid of that right i'm going to put the exposure back to where it is in fact i want to enhance increase the exposure so this time i'm going to increase the exposure here and you can see as i increase the exposure still maintaining the detail right in the the lights so it, uh, that gives a nicer effect because now we can see the detail of both the lamps as well as the surroundings we can also adjust maybe a little bit of the shadow here we just a little bit of that okay that exposure maybe it's a little bit too bright there you go okay now it's still a little bit too warm despite all those adjustments so i'm just going to reduce the temperature further like so i'm going to actually adjust the orange is a bit still too powerful for my taste so i'm just going to go here to effects and add a color adjustment filter here so i'm just going to add filter color adjustments now why on one chooses to put it in a filter is beyond me it seems like so many steps for such a basic operation as changing the color but on one does have it it's under these effects and then you have to add the filter so for the oranges here, I'm just going to reduce the saturation. And okay, so I think that's looking pretty good. So we can do now a comparison. All right, so let's get to the comparison. So here was the original. Here was the edit from Luminar. And here was the edit from On1. 
Luminar on one. Luminar on one. All right. So which one did you prefer? Let me know in the comments. So what's my verdict? Which one is really better? So for editing low light photos, like the ones you see here, I would say the better raw photo editor would be on one. And that's because as you've seen its noise reduction is far superior. They're not just Luminar, but pretty much any other raw photo editor out there. Also, its masking is more precise. That's super useful for to allow me to select the lights independent of the background. In Luminar, you can do the same thing, but only with a lot of work because Luminar doesn't support any edge detection. The only way Luminar would have would allow for precise masks is if its AI mask did actually work. But it doesn't always work as you've seen. So then you have to just go through manual brushing. On one mask AI, far more convenient to creating a mask. And it also has a refined brush, which allows you to perfect the edges as well. So a lot of great tools from on one for creating masks. Also, I think you can agree that even though Luminar's colors are very good, on ones is more natural looking, especially for this type of low light images. Now you might say, is there any scenario where you would choose Luminar over on one? Definitely. So Luminar, as you've seen, has the far easier interface. You notice that we didn't move from one end to the other. Everything was just in one place here. So for people who just want an easy editing, Luminar is the way to go. So I would recommend Luminar for those who don't want to spend a lot of time learning the software. On One's tools are not difficult by any stretch, but there is a learning curve. And some of uh, On One's UI and navigation is not really intuitive. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. So here we gave a definite answer, which one is better. You may agree or disagree, whatever the case, I'd like to hear from you. Just put it down in the comments. And if you like this content, I'd really appreciate if you subscribe, like, and share this content to help keep the videos coming. And till the next video, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.